Hi everyone, my name is Chris and welcome to Tread Talks, where I walk on this treadmill to stay in shape while making videos for you fine people. This video is really hard for me to make because it's forcing me to face the reality about a habit that I developed over the last two decades. You see, each and every day I consume at least a two liter bottle's worth of Diet Mountain Dew. And if you look up the sweetener that's used in Diet Mountain Dew, the top two suggested search results are, does aspartame cause cancer and does aspartame cause weight gain? And so for my own sake, I need to answer the question, is aspartame bad for you? Let's start with cancer, because that's the fear that keeps me up at night. The fast answer is that aspartame has not been proven to cause cancer, but just in case you're in an argument with someone and you need some details, here's what we know. In 1996, which feels like yesterday to me but which was actually over two decades ago, a report indicated that an increase in brain tumors observed from 1975 to 1992 could be associated with aspartame. The problem with the report is that the data shows the increase in tumors actually began in 1973, which was a full eight years prior to the approval of aspartame. And the increases occurred primarily in people over 70 years old, which wasn't the group that was most exposed to aspartame. So you can't use that data to draw a clear connection between the two. And then in 2005, there was a laboratory study that showed more instances of leukemia and lymphomas in rats that were fed high doses of aspartame, up to the equivalent of 2,083 cans of soda a day. There were some concerns with the study, however, which caused the FDA to maintain its stance that aspartame is safe for consumption. One concern was the presence already of infection in the animals used in the study. The second concern was that the lymphomas and leukemias seemed to appear incidentally or spontaneously. For example, as you administered higher doses of aspartame, you you didn't see higher rates of leukemia and lymphoma, which is what you might expect if it actually were a cancer-causing agent. And finally, a study by the NIH and AARP tracked over 500,000 retirees, and they found no greater incidence of leukemia, lymphoma, or brain cancer in people who consumed aspartame versus those that didn't. And so all of this, combined with the fact that it's been one of the most tested substances out there, make me pretty confident that aspartame doesn't cause cancer. Now if I stop there, I might feel pretty good about continuing to do what I'm doing, but here's the thing. We do have data that shows that aspartame and diet soda consumption in general is correlated with being overweight and unhealthy. Now certainly correlation doesn't equal causation, everyone knows that. But the fact of the matter is that generally speaking, people who drink lots of diet soda have a higher rate of obesity. Part of the reason for this may be that when we consume diet soda, we think that we're making a healthier beverage choice, which we are purely in terms of calories, but we end up actually consuming more food calories, which keeps us either at the same weight we're at or gaining weight. And so, of course, if you're like me, you're saying, hey, that's those people, that's the general population. I'm really good at counting calories. Fair enough, but consider this. If you're consuming diet soda every day because you crave the flavor, you crave the sweetness, then you're not really dealing with the core issue, which is an addiction to sugar or an addiction to sweetness. Diet soda is a way to cope without actually addressing the issue. And if you're trying to be healthy, if you're trying to lose weight for the long run, then we need more than coping mechanisms. We need actual long-term solutions, especially because that coping mechanism has you spending hundreds of dollars a year and leaves you perpetually craving that next soda. So aspartame probably doesn't cause cancer, but it's not a long-term solution. At best, it's a temporary measure, something on the way to actually being free from addiction to sweetness and addiction to sugar. And that's a topic in and of itself, but it's one I'm going to have to go into, and probably next time, because I can't keep drinking these every day. Actually, this is a lie. This is what I drink when I go out in public and I don't want to be ashamed of myself. This is what I drink when I'm at home. So either of these, I'm going to drink these two, and then that's going to be the end of it, and the next time I'll probably be very sad and in the midst of aspartame withdrawal, so hey, that'll be fun, but join in next time for how to leave sugar or sweetness behind. Okay, so that was aspartame, and now as I consider my life without Diet Mountain Dew, I need to know, how have any of you out there overcome your addiction to sweetness or your addiction to sugar? Whatever it is, leave it in the comments, I'll benefit from it, and so will anyone else that reads it. Beyond that, if you like this video and you want to keep up with my content, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers, and it would be great if you were a part of that group. And hit the little bell icon to be notified when a new video goes up. Either way, thank you very much for watching, and have a great day. Thank you.